All right, so today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about what an unbiased estimator is. And so to build our conceptual understanding of it, um, we're going to do a little activity here. With our calculators, actually I'm going to use Excel, I'm going to get three integers at random between 0 and 9. And I'm going to find the range of these three numbers. And, we're going to, and so this range idea, which I'll call R, a little R bar, because I'm going to get the average of these numbers, if it is an unbiased estimator, well, this average should actually equal range, and I'm going to call it rho, because capital R. Okay, if it's true, then these should be the same values, because this statistic is meant to be an estimate of the real value. And we want to see if it's appropriate or not. So let's go and look at some of these values. So here I've got a spreadsheet set up, and I have random inches 1, 2, 3, and 3. And so the range of this sample will be 8 minus 3. Now, as I do this, I'm going to do a whole bunch at the same time. It will automatically change what the numbers are as I do the different calculations. So here's different random variables. And so 6 to 2 is a range of 4. When I pull this down, it'll randomize them again. But So here are all my different range samples. So 9, 5, and 4 are my numbers. So the range is 9 subtract 4, which is 5. This is 9 subtract 3, which is 6, which is 3. So now if I come along and I find the average, the average of all of these, we can see the average is 5.72. Well, I know if my population has values from 0 to 9, which it does, if I took lots and lots of these, then the range should be 9. But I could see that my range was 5.7. So systematically, this way of finding the range is flawed. It produces a biased result, which is less than the true value. The true value should be 9, but this average does not equal 9. And so this would be a biased estimator. We want this value to equal this and then it is unbiased. So there's the idea behind it. So let's try an example. So here's, to generalize it, if a population of parameter alpha has a sample statistic of little a is an unbiased estimate, if the expected value of a, of this sample statistic, if I do this computation, the expected value should end up being alpha. And that's, if this is true, it is an unbiased estimator then A is an unbiased estimator of alpha. Uh, one thing to point out, though, is because it's uh, a lowercase a, it refers to a sample of some sort from the sample. Because it's a Greek letter, Greek letters, they refer to the population. Now, that is a generalization. It's not an absolute rule. But if you see a Greek letter, you should start to think that that's talking about the actual population of, of the random variable, whereas A is a sample from that population. Okay, let's try an example here. So we have the example here. We have um, a sample of a large population of potato bags, one kilogram potato bags, was obtained and weighed the given results. Here are the results. I get five potato bags. Using the formulas from your formula booklet, calculate an unbiased estimate of the population mean population variance and standard deviation, and then compare these with our calculator. Well, if we go to our formula booklet, in the stats option, you can see this whole section here is exactly what we're referring to. We're going to be asked to find the mean of this, which means I'm going to take the frequency of all my x's, multiply them together, and then add them. So in my particular example, I have just one of each. So if I'm going to calculate x bar, which is the, est the unbiased estimate of the actual mean of the population. I take 0 0.98 plus 1.12 plus 1.2 plus 0 0.95 plus 1.05. All of that is divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, by 5. And when I do that, I get 1.06 kilograms. So that is the unbiased estimate of the population of the potato bags. 
Now, the population variance of n standard deviation. Well, I want the unbiased one. Well, if we look here, our formula booklet says two things. We have this one, and we have this one here. Okay, we want to find the unbiased population, so it's n over n minus 1. And the easiest version to use here is going to be this scenario here. Okay, so I'm going to add up all these values squared. So if I'm going to find standard deviation or variance of n minus 1, I'm going to go 0 0.98 squared plus 1.12 squared plus 1.2 squared plus 0 0.95 squared plus 1.05 squared. Divide this all, so this is the sum, the frequency of all of these was 1. I'm going to divide that by 4, which is 5 minus 1. That is going to be subtracted from 5 over 4 times x bar squared, which is 1.06 squared. And when I do that computation, I end up getting 0 0.01 uh, 405. And so then the standard deviation of this, because this is variance, the standard deviation is the square root of that. And if my numbers here are correct, I believe I should get 0 0.102. And that is using this formula here, not this variance formula, is biased. It's not the unbiased. And so this one is the one that is unbiased, which we can see from our formula booklet here. So compare it with our GDC calculator results. Well, let's do that. Let's put our values in. As you can see, I've already listed them. So I'm going to go statistics. I'm going to calculate one variable statistics. My frequency list is one. Or my list is one. My frequency only blanks. And I'm going to calculate it. And I can see here, I can see clearly that my x bar is 1.06, so that's good. But here I have two different values for standard deviation. And we have to make sure we choose the right one. This one here is s. This is the unbiased estimate. Okay, so s sub x from our calculator is the unbiased estimate of the population, of the population, okay, of the population. Sigma is the actual, the actual standard deviation of the sample, okay, so it's the actual standard deviation, the deviation of the sample, which is not a good estimate of the population. And so you have to make sure you know which one is telling you what, and so when we want an unbiased estimator of the sample of the population, we take this value here, s sub x. And that's an important one to distinguish. Okay, one more example here. I want to prove that sample mean is an unbiased estimator of the population mean. Well, what that means is I want to show that here is the population mean. I want to show that it's equal to mu. I don't know if this is true yet, that's what I'm trying to prove. So if I'm going to try and prove that, well, I know that the sample mean is equal to x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus all the way up to xn divided by n. That's the computation that happens to get uh, x bar. Well, using our random variable algebra, I can factor out the 1 over n, and then it becomes the expected value of x1 plus the expected value of x2 all the way up to the expected value of xn. Well, the expected value of the first sample's average value is going to be mu. The expected value of the second sample is going to be mu and so on. Each one I expect it to be mu. Well, I know that there are n mu, so it's n times mu. There's n of these, and so I end up with mu. 
Therefore, since the expected value of x bar equals mu, it is an unbiased estimate. Okay, so we do the calculation within expectation of the variable that we're trying to uh, analyze, and we hope to get the population value.